here we are some 20 feet above the stateroom floor looking at the stateroom ceiling which is one of the most um, challenging aspects of the restoration project. In 1732 the ceiling was built on the cheap and we are now repairing the ceiling to ensure it is not going to collapse. Um, above me is a section which has had to be pulled down and repaired in traditional methods using the laughs. Um, but another method of repair is using these metal bars with discs on the end, so holes cut in the plaster work. These are inserted, attached to a beam which is tightened up, um, and then any holes will be made good, so no one will know when looking at the ceiling from below that any repair has actually gone on. Here we have a replaced section of um, lath. Now, one of the reasons the house was built on the cheap is that these laths, as they're called, were so close together, when a plaster ceiling was put in place, there was not enough um, gap for the plaster to go through to, to form a nodule that, which would have held the, the plaster in place. And over time, this is all detached. And in fact, this entire section was, could have fallen down at any time. Um, and the reason they're probably doing this is that plaster was relatively far more expensive than putting the laughs up in the early 18th century. Well, one fascinating aspect that we have been uncovering through the restoration processes is um, aspects of protection and good look put into the building. We found shoes, handprints, um, Jesus and Mary initials, um, broken glass with bones, but one very rare find which came as quite a startling shock was the discovery of a mummified cat just above me here. And we'll be going to York Archaeological Trust to see how they have been preserving and conserving our mansion house cat. And my approach when dealing with the York Mansion cat was not so much to just go in and just start. It was, it was to take a really non-invasive approach because there's so much history preserved in the cat. I began with research, simple research, where I found that these cats, while not very rare, the fact that it was documented was in fact very rare. So I, I wanted to start documenting and um, taking samples, taking samples of the insect remains um, and taking samples of the, the hair that is still intact so that I can use the Durham labs to, to analyze that. And then after those samples were taken, um, the cat went to a freeze dryer. He went on a little vacation to a freeze dryer where we were able to ensure no um, mold spores or insect activity could then come back. Here we are looking at the x-rays that were generously done by tower vet groups. With the x-rays, we were able to determine the age of the cat. In this case, right in these back legs, it showed that the growth plates were just about fused, but not quite which meant that the, the cat was then just over a year, but not two years old yet. Our preliminary understanding is that the cat was dead when it went into the floor and that it was placed in, in such a way as it looked like it was just sleeping. Well, cats would have um, been buried in walls or uh, floors as kind of an apotropaic symbol. Um, they, were, they were believed to have a connection with the spirit world and witches. We come to the fact that he was buried in, on a bed of hazelnut shells. Um, and hazelnut shells are really very unique in this instance because there's no other documented case of a cat buried with hazelnut shells. Hazelnut shells have themselves a long history of being tied to fertility. So in this case, it is interesting to see that there is a cat who has ties to the spirit realm and there are hazelnut shells. So maybe we'll be able to draw some conclusions between those but, um, and correlations, but we'll see. It'll be very interesting.